it Kaist. Okay, so it's a basic notion uh, talk, so it's a, supposed to be basic. So I will um, talk about uh, the, con the basic concepts and some results in this area of research. So first I talk about uh, the infinite dimensional Lie algebra we are using. So this is the one and the Hilbert schemes. Okay, so first I talk about this one particular the algebra that uh, has applications in geometry of Hilbert schemes. So this is a Heisenberg algebra. Okay, so let's look at this uh, range of poly uh, polynomials of infinite, ma infinite many variables, x1, xn, to x1, x2, xn, infinite many variables. So we have polynomials here, for example, polynomial such as x1 plus x2 plus da, da, da. Okay, so we can define two operations on this uh, uh, space F. So we can have two operations. So let's see, um, I want to assume I is bigger than zero. We can define uh, one operator uh, denoted by P minus I. So P minus I act on a polynomial. So F is a polynomial here. It's just a, a polynomial multiplied by xi, the variable xi. So here I use a minus. So this is a notation used in algebra. So we use minus. So then there's another operation, positive. So positive is defined to be uh, the, uh, the, the i, this number i, derivative of xi of the f. So we have two operations. So one is uh, uh, multiplying by xi. The other one is essentially differentiation by xi, but modified by this uh, i. So this p minus i will be called the creation operator. And this p positive i would be called annihilation operation. Annihilation. So later on, we are going to see why we give names of, the, uh, of such a type. Yeah, we log infinite sum. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. More like four, four power series. Yeah, formal power series. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we have this. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, not, not a formal power series. Uh, 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 this is a polynomial of finite many variables, but but the number of variables are infinite. Infinite many variables. Infinite many variables. Okay. Maybe a stop. <laughs> okay, <laughs> variables are infinite. Okay, the the polynomials are ordinary polynomials, okay. not, not 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 formal power, power series. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's look at commutation. So, so we, we, we define uh, PI as always, PJ. Uh, so, sorry, I use KL. So KL can be positive, can be negative. So this here, KL uh, lies in Z minus zero. <coughs> so we can have the commutation. So we define this to be Define this to be um, uh, PK, PL. Okay, so this is commutation of the two. So we can check easily that this PI, PJ, 
if i are all positive, this will be zero. So that means that if you take differentiation, uh, they commute. And if you multiply, they also zero. Okay. So maybe let me write here. Uh, this here I'm assuming uh, i j bigger than zero. And the pi, then you multiply, you, you take differentiation, or you come, come uh, let's look at this commutation. This is also zero if i is not j, because if you multiply a thing, you take a derivative of another variable, the commute. And the last one will be we will we'll have some commutation relation. So this is i. I multiplied by the identity. So this is easy to verify. So uh, pi, p minus i times f minus p uh, minus i, pi times f. So this e equals. So this is i differentiation. This is multiplication by xi times f minus. This is multiplication by xi times derivative i run run xi f. Here, we just use the product rule. We get i run run xi, derivative of xi, so that's 1, i times f, plus uh, i, uh, then xi times the derivative of f, minus this thing. They cancels out. So this is i times f. So therefore, uh, the commutation is i times identity. So all these four things can be simplified into one simple expression. It is pk, any pl, will be k, delta k plus l, 0. So delta k plus l, 0 means that this is 0 unless k plus l is 0. That is the case k equals a minus L, which is this case. Okay, so this, this, this relation is called a Heisenberg commutation relation. Okay. So if we have algebra over C generated by operators, Satisfy this commutation relation, that algebra will be called a Heisenberg algebra. So Heisenberg algebra algebra means just operators, uh, let's see, uh, k. k lies in z minus origin. You can plug in 0 here, just operator will be 0 with this commutation relation. k, third k plus l, 0. Okay. okay, so the example I just gave to you, in fact, says something more. says that this f is a representation. Representation of this Heisenberg. Let, let me use this uh, script h to represent the Heisenberg of h, because this, uh, this algebra act on f. Yeah, they always consider in, 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 in algebra, they always put this i here. Uh, this yeah, uh, this I don't know, oh. because uh, probably from physics, the commutation relation, there's a k here. Yeah, that k comes, yeah, this, this i, in fact, is kind of artificial. Right, right. Yeah, because of that k. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, so now if we look carefully, so in the f, there's a, a, a one particular vector. We, we regard this as a vector space. Then there's a particular vector called a 1. Yeah, yeah. Did I understand well, this, this i here, uh, everything will be 
isomorphic if you don't put is it what you said? Uh, say say it again. Yeah. If you don't put this i here, this multiplication by number i, uh -huh. the algebra will be completely isomorphic to the Yeah, there'll be yeah, 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 yeah. The commutation relation you just uh, don't write the k. Okay. Yeah, that's a different commutation relation. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. They are also morphic. If you if you modify your 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 functor by this by a i, yeah, the commutation relation will be changed. So there's no k anymore. Yeah. Okay. So if so so this this one is a little bit special. So we can see what, why this special one. First, all the annihilation operators will kill the one. So all the pi's for i positive is zero. Okay, so that's why it's called an annihilation operator. So kill this one. This one usually is called a vacuum vector. So this is a definitely terminology from physics, and usually denoted by this. Okay, so first annihilation operator. Then we can also see that all the polynomials, not from a policy, but all the polynomials come from linear combinations of um, action of creation operators. For example, this x1, x2, x3 equals um, uh, p minus 1 acting on the vacuum plus p minus 2 vac acting on vacuum plus p minus 3 acting on vacuum. Okay, because p minus, p minus 1 just means multiply x1 to 1. This is just uh, multiply x2 to 1, x3 to 1. Okay, so you can also see that all the, all the elements here, for any f in here, f can be written as uh, linear combination, linear combination, Okay, or I, I write this as a, a polynomial of p minus 1, p minus 2, p minus some n, finite many, acting on some vacuum. Okay. So that's why it's called a creation operator. So all the polynomials can be created from the vacuum by these operators. So from here, we can also say that this usually is also called this, this f, some, sometimes called a Fox space. It's also some, some, sometimes we, we call the, the highest weight irreducible representation of this Heisenberg algebra. Okay, highest weights because of this weight. Irreducible, you can see that because of uh, every f, every uh, um, polynomial can be written in this way, it must be irreducible. Okay, so that's for the Heisenberg. Okay, so that's so much for the Heisenberg. Yeah, maybe I also do a one more thing. Uh, can, can I lift this? Or this? How, how, do, how do I? Can I lift? Or I cannot. Maybe not. Maybe not use this. Not to lift. Yeah, you cannot. Nothing else. Nothing else. Just try to threaten, give people impressions of high tech. This at the end, they're going to erase the correct. Oh, this is eraser. Oh, oh, high tech. Okay, sorry. Oh, I see, I see. Oh. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so then uh, I can write here. So uh, um, if, if, I, if I give a degree, degree of each variable i, the xi, I give a degree, weighted degree, give a degree i. Okay, so then I have operator at e to be sigma sum, all the k, um, p minus i, p, uh, sorry, um, minus uh, i, i, 
I positive. Okay, so this is always a standard notation in, in algebra. You always uh, write annihilator on the right, creation operator on the left. You take differentiation first. You do multiplication later. So that's the tradition in, in algebra. Okay, you, this is usually called a normal ordering. So anyhow, so uh, I take this operator. You can see easily. Okay, this is true because when you take a differentiation. You get a one, but remember, this is not only differentiation, but this extra i here. Okay, this extra k gives you oh, sorry, uh, gives you the uh, gives you the k x k. Sorry. Okay, when you take a differentiation, x k disappears. This extra k come out, and this is the other x k. Okay. So this operator, you can see that uh, you, then you can define the subspace of F as all the polynomials such that the, the eigenspace of this F with eigenvalue k, F. Okay. So this is a subspace of uh, this eigenspace of the operator E. This E is usually called Euler operator. Okay, so with the, with the vector field k, for example, xk is here, and also, uh, and also x1 to the k is also here. So many polynomials are in here. Okay, because if you take a derivative, um, yeah, this, this, this is also here. Okay, so, uh, so then you can compute. This is easy to compute. You can compute the dimension of each fk, okay, and you you add a q here, q to the q to the k, I think, sigma sum, k from zero to infinity. Okay, you can compute this. In fact, is this inf infinite one over infinite product, j from one to infinity, one minus q to the j. Yeah, this is usually called a trace of, of the operator. But anyhow, we, we, we are here. Okay, so we are going to see uh, this appearing in the Hilbert scheme later on. Okay, so much for the, the algebra. Then I need to talk about the Hilbert scheme. So the Hilbert scheme uh, is, uh, is an algebraic geometric uh, concept for parameterizing family of scheme structures on um, something. But we are, we, are, we are considered Hilbert scheme of a very simple type, Hilbert scheme of points on a, a, a surface. So x is a surface. OK, so uh, first, let's look at what is Hilbert scheme. Yeah. What do you mean by surface? Oh, surface, complex surface, yeah. I'm assuming everybody is actually geometry. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Surface complex surface, which means dimension dimension of the x uh, in terms of the complex uh, dimensions too. Yeah. Uh, for example, uh, example will be uh, C two, um, uh, P two, C P two. Yeah. Surface here means uh, uh, yeah. Um, may, maybe non compact or compact. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Okay, so first we can consider symmetric product. Okay, symmetric product means I multiply x n times. I mod out the symmetric group. So this is a symmetric group of n letters. Okay. So um, when n is 1, sorry, no, no, with the, when the dimension of x, the complex dimension is 1, symmetric product is smooth. <coughs> so for example, you can, you can really prove this easily. 
symmetric product P1 is Pn. Okay. So when dimension is 2, the symmetric product is not smooth. So where is the singularity? So uh, here, for example, symmetric product. Okay, so I can have um, two parts. One is a smooth part. I'm going to use this, this just a notation, un, union with a diagonal. So un consists of distinct endpoints. So these are xi distinct. Okay. So that's the open, open part of a symmetric product. Delta means it's not distinct. So it will be n1 x1 plus 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 n maybe k xk. Okay, so n1 plus nk is n, of course k will be less, uh, less than n. So some, there will be some multiplicities. So that's where the, the, the symmetric product becomes singular. Uh, the sum is, uh, is a representation of a collection of points, then you consider an ordered because you model the symmetric product so, so as a sum, yeah. An ordered collection of indistinct points. Okay, okay, so um, then uh, in algebra geometry, if whenever we get some uh, space which is singular, we want to uh, desingular, desingularize or re resolve the singularity. <coughs> So, um, okay, so uh, the Hilbert scheme I will give two descriptions. In fact, they are equivalent, but the, they represent different aspects of Hilbert schemes. One is here is zero dimensional. Uh, closed subscheme subschemes of x of length equals n. So this n for this n. So if I call the subscheme C, C, I can also regard this as in terms of uh, uh, ideals is uh, ideal sheaves. Basically, correspond that C with uh, ideal shifts of O x with uh, co length n or the dimension C of uh, O x over I C is n. Okay. So um, okay. So I want to illustrate a little bit of. Uh, the structure of the Hilbert scheme in this case. So let's let's see x. For example, if if, if I consider here x don't need to be a surface. So, but in general, if I consider a sur a, a, a one-dimensional object. So, um, so what is a point? A point on x. Let's call it point P on x corresponds to this maximum ideal, right? So if we learn uh, algebra, algebra geometry, that's the first thing we know, uh, we learn. So point corresponds to uh, ideal, maximum ideal. So if I have an uh, n point, point with the multiplicity n, which means I'm very singular, which means I have uh, just one point with the multiplicity n here, that should correspond to the maximum, not maximum ideal, but this ideal. 
x minus p to the nth power uh, to the generated by this x minus p to the nth power. So if I have two points, distinct points in here, for example, that should correspond to x minus p, x minus q, correspond to this ideal. So ideal will correspond to points. OK, so, uh, so if x is a C2, so if I, have one, one, uh, if I have a point in C, in C2, sorry, C2, then that corresponds to a uh, maximum ideal, x minus a, y minus b. OK, so point corresponds to that. So um, here, I can also have ideal x, y squared. That's also ideal. So that will correspond to point. But in fact, that will not correspond to point, but corresponds to um, point with multiplicity. But in fact, more than that, corresponds, corresponds to a subscheme to C, which means the C is defined by the vanishing of uh, this polynomial. All the polynomials in that uh, ideal. Okay. So therefore, you, 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 get a, you get a C, which is a zero-dimensional subscheme. Okay, so you get, you get this. So um, you can also have uh, x squared y minus ax. So this is also ideal. The support, the, the support of, uh, you, you can see, okay. So anyhow, so this corresponds to another eta also lies in here. So what does this represent? Okay, so basically this represents, if I draw x and y, on C2. Okay, so let's see. Um, this represents that uh, x squared vanished twice, means I vanished on y twice. So basically this corresponds to, so then I have this direction, I have direction like this. This is y minus ax. Basically this corresponds to this tangent direction at this point. And this corresponds to, uh, um, let me see, uh, this corresponds to y equals 0, y equals 0 here, probably corresponds to this tangent direction. Okay, so, um, so now we can see that uh, the, 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 the skin structure, so let me, I want to make it more precise. Okay, I want, I want to say this, this is a skin structure of two because you can see if you multiply, if you mod CXY, which is your structure shift here, over uh, this ideal, you will see that X mod out C direct sum with, uh, as, a lean, uh, as a vector space, then Y survives, CY, YC. So it's two dimensional as a vector space over C. So it lies in here, in Hilbert 2. Yeah, maybe in y direction. Of, yeah, y is in y direction, y, uh, in, the, in the other direction. Yeah, in the y direction. So this is this tangent direction. Okay, so... Um, so now I can see that my Hilbert scheme of two, C consists of two parts. One part is zero-dimensional subscheme just consists of two distinct points of length two. So first is P plus Q, P, Q distinct. Another is all the subschemes 
whose, whose length of the subscheme is 2, and the support of the subscheme is 1 point. Okay. Just like this. For example, C, this C, the support is at origin. Okay. The support of uh, this eta is also at origin. So now you can see that we clearly have a map 2C, which is P plus Q, also PQ distinct. You disjoint union with a diagonal, diagonal just 2P, where P moves on my, on my, my C2. Okay, this P also lies on C2. So now it's easy to see there's a map from here to here. Just map PQ to PQ in this case. From here to here, it's also map. Just map C to the support. Okay. So which means you map uh, uh, the, the screen structure to the support. You, you, for, you remember the multiplicity. The multiplicity is 2. So therefore, there's a map from here to here. This has a name called a Hilbert Chow map morphism. So map from the Hilbert scheme to the symmetric product. We can also see what is the image of this map. So over here is isomorphism. Over here, the pre-image of 2P consists of all the tangent directions at this point. So basic tangent directions at the point P, which is isomorphic to P1. OK, so uh, Hilbert scheme and symmetric product are almost the same. However, over, over the diagonals, they are different. So Hilbert scheme, in certain sense, contains more information. Here, symmetric product only can consider multiplicity, but Hilbert scheme also consider the, in, if lens is two, tangent direction. If uh, the lens is higher, other skin structures. Okay, so in general, this is also true. In general, we always have a map for Hilbert nx to the symmetric product, nx, this is called a pi, so x is surface, okay, and have the similar property. So this property says that, this property says that these two are birational because it is isomorphism for, uh, from an open set to an open set. So pi first is birational. And also we know this is proved that this guy is smooth. So Hilbert scheme is smooth. So therefore Hilbert scheme is a, uh, is a, a, resolu a resolution of symmetric product. So, so a resolution. OK, so this is about the Hilbert scheme. So um, uh, in general, if you have, um, so what is, uh, for example, this, the most singular point here is NP. The multiplicity is N at P. So what is pre-image? So this guy is very complicated, but we know the dimension in general. Dimension is N minus 1, and, and also irreducible. But detailed structures of this uh, inverse is very complicated. And uh, there are still people studying this type of uh, set. OK. So next, let's say a few words about why we are inter interested in Hilbert schemes.
So first reason, um, probably it's a classical, classically, this is a classical, classical, classical stuff is that um, uh, many enumerative geometry can be uh, rephrased as intersection theory on the Hilbert scheme can be can be expressed as intersection theory. Can, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Uh, the dimensions of this, this x to the c dimension. You mean this one? No. Uh, the, to the total dimension. This guy? It is it's two n. Okay, so I should I should write the dimension. Dimension of Hilbert skin n x is two n, a complex dimension, <coughs> because uh, the symmetric product uh, has a dimension two n. It's very rational. And uh, the primitives of all the points have smaller dimension than this one. This one. You mean you, uh, okay? If I fix upon p. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, this is this is maximal dimension. Yeah. So this uh, resolution is very, very special. Yeah, it's very special. Because the, the fibers are very low. Dimension. Yeah, yeah. This is very special. Yeah, they call semi-small resolution. Yeah. Yeah, can be expressed as uh, theory on the Hilbert scheme. So this is similar like a grass many. So as we know, many enumerated geometry can be interpreted as intersection on grass manuals. So that's why people are interested in Hilbert scheme. That's one classical uh, situation, cl classical stuff. Okay, so, um, so another thing is um, two. From this point of view, as a zero-dimensional close-up scheme, where therefore you have this map, and in general this map, you look carefully. This is a, a this is a x cross x n times mod s n. So this is a this is an orbifold. So symmetric n x is an orbifold. So nowadays there's a huge industry studying orbifold. So, uh, so, so this is an orbifold theory. So, so this fit into orbifold theory. So orbifold cohomology, orbifold gromov witten invariance. So those type of things are here. Three. If I take this point of view, ideal sheaves are sheaves. So they are low torsion-free sheaves. So they can regard it as a special case of uh, higher rank sheaves. They are just rank one. So, so this Hilbert scheme, therefore, is a set of uh, sheaves. These sheaves are stable, so therefore, it's a baby case of stable sheaves. So Hilbert scheme is, can also be regarded as modular space of, of uh, stable sheaves. So this is also a huge area. This is an area that lots of people uh, study. Yeah, this is obvious because if you have um, any torsion-free sheaf, mm -hmm. it has to be self if the rank is smaller. Yeah. Okay, so, so I hope I convinced you that uh, this Hilbert scheme is an uh, interesting space to study. So therefore, we study this space. So if we study a space, the first thing we do is do the topology which means we compute the Betty numbers. Okay, so, so topology. Then we study more maybe ge RGB geometry. But anyhow, so first of thing, this, uh, maybe I, I also can give another reason why this is interesting. For example, if X is K3, the Hilbert scheme of NX is hypercalar, compact hypercalar. If x is compact, k three is compact. 
Okay. So uh, this is a very few example of a compact hypercalar existence. So this is a hypercalar. Okay, so topology of Hilbert scheme. So uh, first, Betty numbers. So uh, Birchev uh, proved a formula for um, Betty numbers. So let me write this out. So this is the formula. So this is the Poincare polynomial of the Poincare polynomial, which means consists of all the Betty numbers in, in here. So there's a variable t here. Then for each n, I get a Poincare polynomial. Then I take a summation with the q to remember the n. I add them all together. So Gertrude said that there's a closed formula. So here is T, Q, those are the variables here. Then B1 is a Betty number of X, B3 is a Betty number of X, B2 is a Betty number of X. So it's a very beautiful formula. And if you take a uh, Euler number, which means you take a Q, a T to be one in here, so then, then the formula becomes All a number of uh, the Hilbert scheme. Sorry, I use a different notation. Uh, I use Hilbert n x. Okay, so Hilbert n x q n will be. So all not. So this will be one. This will be sorry. This uh, take. I think it's take to be a minus one. Sorry. Take a t to be minus one. So this becomes a minus one. This becomes a minus one. This is minus, so one minus QM, one minus QM, one minus QM, one minus QM, one minus QM. Then the product of M. Okay, so on the numerator, it will be one minus B1 plus B2 minus B3 plus, plus B4. That's exactly the only number of X. Okay, so now you can see, or I write this as to the power of all a number of x. Now you see that this is exactly the character formula of Heisenberg. Okay. So this inside is nothing but the character formula for the Heisenberg. Okay. Then you raise the power to the all a number. This all number is to the power. So t, 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 minus one in the uh, t equals minus one into the formula. So this becomes a one minus q m, uh -huh. because it's a, this is an odd power. Uh -huh. all, all the numerators are odd power. The denominator is, uh, denominator is uh, a even power. So still one minus q m, one minus q m, one minus q m. No, they didn't, they did they, 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 yeah, maybe they cancel, but it doesn't matter. I still can write this as one minus the power, one minus B1 in terms of power, plus B2 minus B3 plus B4. That's all our number of my X. Uh -huh, right. Yeah, okay, That's yeah. All yeah, all our number of the, of the, yeah. So you, you can see this, this inside 
is exactly this uh, this uh, character formula. Okay, so this looks like coincident, but in fact, it's not coincident. Um, No, no. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Eventually, probably. Will. Yeah, yeah. Everything has a motive. So I'm, I'm sure eventually there is a motive. motive. Okay. But uh, from a physical point of view, the physics says the following. There's a conjecture called Waffa Witten. saying that if I have a modular space of stable bundles, okay, so I will, I will be very weak on, 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 on X surface. So this is a modular space of, of uh, stable bundles, stable sheaves on X with a chain class C1, C2 rank R. If you take all a number of this, you take a Q to the maybe C2, C2 is a number, you add them together according to the C2. Physics, physics is conjecture that this is a modular form. Okay, it's a modular form. Because of they call it S duality. Okay, so I, as I said, Hilbert scheme is a baby case of uh, modular space. So all our number, in fact, would be this. If x is k3, for example, you can prove this is 24, I think it's 24. The mod of one coefficient in front, this is a modular form for k3. Uh, so why do I talk about the Heisenberg? Okay, so because there is a discovery by uh, Nakajima and Kronowski that uh, there's a Heisenberg action on the Hilbert scheme. That there, exi there exists a Heisenberg. Uh, a, a, a Heisenberg on this Hilbert scheme. So by this, I mean the following thing. Okay, so I want to, I need to make it precise. So first, So here you can see that in the formula, I have to add all the Hilbert scheme together. So here I also do the same thing. I add all the cohomology of Hilbert scheme together. Oh. Okay, so this, this star represents the summation sum of all the cohomologies, means H1 h0 plus h1 plus h2 plus da da da. In stuff on zero, so here I have to assume, I have to have a convention, Hilbert zero x is just a point. Okay. So this is infinite dimensional vector space in the first place. Then we're going to create some operation acting on this edge which we prove that is a Heisenberg action. Okay, so the action will be, this is a Nakajima's construction. So we do the following. So for example, we do xn times xn plus i. This i can be positive, can be negative, doesn't matter. So this construction I'm going to write, in fact, it, it, it has been used in geometric representation theory. This is a standard construction, but it may not be standard in algebra geometry, okay? But anyhow, so, uh, 
So I have two projections. Okay. I construct a subset in here. I use um, I for this I, N for this N, then there's Y. So what is Y? Y is just the sub variety of X. Could be point, could be curve, could be X itself. Okay, so then, okay, maybe. So I, I'm going to use this subset to create an operator. So the idea is very simple. Idea is, you just, uh, let's see, which direction I use. Uh, I mean, I need to make sure my, okay, pi, pull back, okay. So idea is very simple. I, I want to create oper operation on edge. So first, I define operation. Oh, so, sorry, I have to define what this is. Okay, this subset I, Y, what is this? This consists of things here. Okay, you see. Oh, maybe I do, I do things here. It's easy to make a comparison. Yeah. Okay, so n is a dimension. Uh, sorry, I'm using the different notation. So I use a notation that I, I'm, I'm used to, but somehow I change my notation all the time. Okay, so let's come back to the. Okay, so n is this n. This is the number of uh, points on x. So here you fix, uh, yeah, fix I fix n, arbitrary n, I fix arbitrary i. Okay. Okay, so this is Hilbert n plus i. And you fix an arbitrary y. I fix arbitrary y. Okay, so I define this set. Okay, so this set is, consists of the pair of element here. So this C is here, uh, eta is here. Okay, let's assume that i is positive. So here, eta, so let's assume i is positive. Then the eta, the, the n plus i will have more points than the C, right? The number of points is n plus i if i is positive. Okay, so then I, I, I force that first C is a subscheme of eta. I mean, eta, C is containing eta. That's the first thing I, I, I force myself. And then the extra, this extra, eta minus C. This extra must be a one point support on Y. Okay. So for example, I can have eta equals C, arbitrary C, plus, for, for example, support of C does not contain the, the point origin. Suppose x is a C2, I want to give an example, what is this? And the eta can be C plus this ideal, this, this subscheme corresponds to the ideal x, y to the i. Okay, so this is, this, this, this ideal support, this subscheme correspond to, this, the subscheme correspond to this is supported on uh, origin. Okay, with the length i. So this is the extra i. Okay. So this is n. This has a n plus i. Extra will concentrate at one point. And this point is confined on the y. Yeah. What is y here? Y is the arbitrary sub, sub variety. In your example? Uh, no, not, yeah, in my example, for example, I can, I, I can take a y to be just o. That's fine. Yeah. Or I can take a y to be a curve. Yeah. Contains zero, for example. Is the yeah. Okay, the i, the i, yes. the i is the length of extra. Oh, length of extra. Yeah, you see, first you have n here, then you have n plus i. This i is more. Okay, so the requirement is the more has to be concentrated at one point. So it is this, yeah, with the mat with the skin structure at that point with the multiplicity i. 
Okay, so this, this is a construction. Okay. So then use this subset, you can define operator. So this is very common in the so-called geometric representation theory. Okay, use geometry to create representations. So you create an operator. Oh, sorry, I use this notation again. Uh, Hilbert nx goes to the Hilbert's, the cohomology of something higher. Okay, something higher. By doing the following thing, so you have an element here, goes to, first, you pull, pull A by the pi one to a cohomology class here. So A goes to, A is here, <coughs> goes to, you pull back the A. So this will be a cohomology in the product. Then you take a cut product with this class. Okay. It becomes a, a homology class in here. You take push forward of the homology to, to a homology class here. Then you, you but you want to have a, 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 a cohomology, so you take a Poincare do. Okay. So basically it's very simple. You just pull back, take a, take a car product with the cohomology represented like this, then take a push forward on the cohomology to here. Pull back, take car product with this set, take push forward. Okay, so you get this operator. So I'm almost run out of time. So, um, so then you can define the sigma, you, so this is for n, then you, you add n, n together, add all the n together. So th th therefore you get a map from edge to edge. So this is for i bigger than zero. i less than zero, you do the similar construction. Okay, the important thing is, let's call this operator uh, P uh, minus I. So I suddenly becomes a minus I. And uh, uh, alpha, so what is alpha? Alpha <coughs> is due to, to the Y. Y is a homology class, sub-variety. But I still want to use a cohomology. So I take a cohomology that's due to Y. Okay, so, so this, rep this will be denoted by P minus I alpha. Similarly, you can also have a P I beta for positive. Okay, so what that result? That result says that this satisfies the Heisenberg relations. K alpha P uh, uh, L beta is uh, minus one to the i minus one, um, uh, sorry, a, a k minus one, then there's a k, and then there's alpha cup beta integral r x. So this is almost like Heisenberg relations, except this 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 uh, this extra stuff. This extra stuff can be uh, absorbed into one operator. Okay, but anyhow, this is a Heisenberg. Okay, so this Hasenberg basically explains why the formula look like this, because Hasenberg character formula I just erased agrees with that. Okay. Um, so this is just the beginning, in fact. This is the beginning of uh, studying cohomology uh, or reign of uh, Hilbert scheme. But I don't have much time, but let me just uh, use one minute to say that, uh, I, so uh, wait, I, I'm, I'm really interested in cohomology reign of this X Hilbert scheme. So, um, so first we have a, a Heisenberg action, a Heisenberg algebra acting on, on, the, on the Hilbert scheme, on the cohomology, on the capital H which is the cohomology. 
then um, how do I study car product? So the, the carbon product we are going to study so-called core module is we take a carbon product and then we are going to regard car product, this is car product. We are going to regard car product as an operator, an operation on edge, which means if you have a class here, A inside cohomology, Hilbert NX, then I can talk about cup, but this is, a, I can regard this as oper operator. Therefore, then I can consider, I can study the commutation operator with this, uh, this Q case, alpha. Okay, so then it turns out that in some cases we can understand this, but I don't have time to, to, to talk about that. Maybe next, tomorrow I talk about that. Okay. Let's have a picture of a wonderful basic function. Here's the skin.